Hi everyone, this is Charles with uh, another Ubuntu video. This one at the request of a viewer who asked, what do I do with those TGZ or tar.gz files? Well, I'm glad you asked. So those files are a little bit different. Those are actually typically source code files. So they're not things that would typically get installed. If you by a package manager like Ubuntu Software Center or Synaptic. If you download one of those files, you're going to have to actually compile the source code. So this video is a bit about compiling software on Ubuntu Linux. And um, just so you you know that you know my my default theme has changed a little bit, but yes, it is indeed Ubuntu Linux. All right, so let's let's have a look here. Um, as I mentioned package managers, they, they typically either handle .rpm files, which are Red Hat package manager files, deb files, which are Debian package management files, which is what Ubuntu typically um, works with, or tar.gz or, or .tgz source, you know, compressed source code files. So um, tar.gz and .tgz are not actually always source code files. It could be anything that's zipped up in a directory. But typically um, people will tar up their uh, source code programs in uh, tar.gz or tgc files. Um, so before you can do any of this uh, you need an actual compiler. And the easiest way to do that is to grab the package called build essential and this is the command on the command line to do that let's just quickly go and do that As you can see, it's actually already done, so we don't really need to do that. Okay, now there are typically um, six steps that that I use. Um, other people have compressed this down to really it's only three steps. First, you want to uncompress the files, and this T should not be capitalized. So it's tar zxvf and whatever the file name is .tar.gz or .tgz. Then in step two you want to read the readme or install files and you do this using the less command or if you open the folder double click on the the um, readme or install files and it's really important to do this because for step three you need to install any dependencies and it's the dependencies that are often listed in the readme or the install files. Um, sometimes it's helpful to go to whatever program uh, you're installing. The website will sometimes list some of the dependencies, but I always like to check the actual readme and install files because sometimes they're more up to date than the website. And then you want to run the configuration file. So typically after you've um, after you've unzipped the folder, um, the autoconf file, uh, there's a, a bunch of configuration files and you'll want to run one of them and what that does is that checks to see if the dependencies themselves are installed. If that's the case then you want to make the source code. So making it does the actual compiling of the source code. And then the last step is to make install the source code. And what the make install step does is it actually installs it to different areas of your file system. So let's go ahead and quickly do these steps here. Okay, so we've see we've got some RPMs and some DEBs. We actually only wor want to work with the nazgul.tar.gz file. So let's uncompress that. Now 
we change into the directory and let's look at the install file and we can see here that Nazgo requires the SDL 1.2, libsdl image 1.2. It's actually listed this twice, but if you look over here, they made a mistake. They just meant to put SDL mixer, libpng, and zlib. Now, whenever I see um, libraries like this, normally uh, what I realize is that sometimes if you install just the, the library, it's this program itself, doesn't work. What you actually need is the the one that has the dev dash dev extension. Now it, it is possible to look for this stuff in um, in Synaptic or in Ubuntu Software Center, but I find it's actually easier to uh, do it from the command line. So using apt cache uh, search. So let's do that. So I put a pipe after and more so that we can see things. Now you can see here how there's libsdl image. It was one of the required files. Well, there's also libsdl image dash dev. And this is really the one that you want, not the libsdl image. You want the stuff that's libsdl dev, uh, whatever dev. Same thing with the mixer here. So we could do this. Um, you could even right click and uh, go copy. Typically I just try and remember this stuff. So you can see I've already installed these ones here. Um, and uh, to make a long story short, I've actually installed the other ones too because I, I went through a dry run of this. So I've already installed libpng and zlib. Now zlib did not require, I, I think this, don't remember if this was the required the dash dev version or not. I think I did. Okay, so the next step is to actually uh, configure then to make and then to make install and you can see here they've actually listed these steps in the readme file as well um, again I've already done this but we'll we'll do this now you'll see when I press tab it only goes to config I actually have to do the the rest of it now this is the step where it checks to see if the dependencies are there so this step actually will always work the same and it will always do the the proper checking here. If you get errors here, it is typically because you're missing dependencies. So here you can see that it even tells us that we can type gmake or make, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make, now I've already made this, but we're going through the process just so that you can see um, what it does. It actually takes about four or five minutes to do it on my system because I have um, fairly slow system. We're just talking about a Celeron 1.5 gigahertz that this is being uh, compiled on. So it's not not terribly powerful, but it's still good enough for for what I uh, for what I need and it's a laptop, so nice system. Um, after this, so after this the executable will have been made. Um, you'll note that the name on this one was Nazgul. The executable is actually a different name called Haxima. They've they've renamed uh, the file, and I think I've already compiled this. And if we go into games, we might even see it here somewhere. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it's in the in the menu. So with some programs they may not actually insert themselves in the menu if you want them in the menu um, you can use one of the many programs to edit the GNOME menu so we'll just wait for this to finish compiling and we'll do the make install um, though that is actually done as well
Okay, so we're all done here. Let's just do the make install. Make install. And you can see all it really does is it tries to move things. Um, oh, right, and there's an error. That's because I have to actually type sudo super user do make install. Forgot to mention that. That is really important if you're in Ubuntu and uh, you don't do that as a super user it's not going to be able to install in the directories it needs to install in. So um, I am going to temporarily lower the volume here because it's really crazy loud this this uh, this program. So hexama.sh yeah. And here we can see powered by Nazgul. So um, Nazgul is just in this this particular game. It's just the um, almost like the emulator. Haxima is the the uh, actual game itself that was created. That's about it. Um, just remember the steps required to compile something and we'll go back to that sheet for a second just to see um, what those steps were. I had six steps but really it's a simple three-step process. Uh, the six steps are to uncompress the file, read the readme or install file, install any dependencies, run the configuration file. I said autoconf, it's actually configure in many cases, make the source code and then make install the source code, so install the source code to the other uh, directory. Thanks for watching this video and hope you tune in for more videos.